Hello and welcome to another Ask Narita Joy video. I have a familiar face here today, Juliet. This is our third facial that we've done on her. Um, the first facial I did not film, which we discussed last time, but we had those photos that we can put some photos in there that you can see how her skin was when I first saw her. After that, we did, um, we did some extractions that very first time I saw her, mostly just on the sides of her face. We did not touch her forehead at all. And then the last time she came in, which is the time the facial that we filmed, we did do a peel on her. So I think it was the next day after her last facial, she took a flight. She's been overseas. She just landed this afternoon and has come over here just so we can film her because then she's catching another flight tonight, right? <laughs> so we, uh, we just have her for a couple of hours today and this is the first time I am seeing her, like all of you from her, uh, from the last video that we did. So I, I haven't, I'm going to cleanse off her skin, have a look. I think you can see um, I'm, I'm happy with um, looking at her forehead because when we first saw her forehead, it was very marked up. I did not do any extractions on her the first time, but her forehead is looking really good, really clear. And um, we've got a little bit of pitting, we've got a mild amount of scarring, but I would say she's probably lost at least 60% of the color just from, um, from us doing the peel last time. And the sides of her face just look so much better. So I'm going to cleanse off her skin, have a quick look at her skin under the Maggie lamp and see what it is that we're going to do today. So right now I'm cleansing Juliet's skin. So we're using the non-foaming gel cleanser and what's really important is when you are cleansing the skin is that you're doing that circular motion. We're getting under any fine facial hair and, uh, and we're just sort of really giving it a, a good cleanse. I think it's really important to clean your skin really well and you know whether it be sponges or whether it is a clean warm wet washcloth which I'm always telling people that's the best way to cleanse your skin is that first cleanse at night after you've been out and about all day it's really important to use that warm wet washcloth to remove the cleanser and uh, it just really uh, cleans the skin that gives it that extra extra cleanse and a slight exfoliation. So I'm just removing the cleanser. I'm using my disposable sponges. I, I normally do recommend that you use a warm wet washcloth at home to remove your cleanser. Uh, the sponges, they carry a lot of bacteria, so it's really important if you are using sponges, you've just got to clean them really well. And sometimes that is uh, washing them well with just soap and water or putting them in the uh, washing machine and uh, actually washing them. So we've cleansed off her skin. I'm now going to be putting the exfoliating mask on and we're going to exfoliate the skin. Her skin is looking, it's just so much healthier, her skin, than when I first saw her. Uh, we've still got a little bit of scarring here, but it's really reduced quite dramatically. And as I said earlier, she doesn't have that angry look in her skin anymore. Now we're just dealing with some minimal scarring and a little bit of pitting, but not too, it's not a really deep pit. So uh, her forehead just looks significantly better in the sides of her face. So, so now I'm going to be putting on the exfoliating mask. I mix just a little bit of the healing gel with, with it, which is a 98% aloe vera. And uh, it, just, it just takes that bite out a little bit. It's, the exfoliating mask is a papaya based mask. It has a little glycolic in it and it has lemon peel powder, it has some chamomile. It has that buffing effect on the epidermis, which is really nice because the buffing effect, it just gets rid of any of that, those dead dry cells. But it also helps to keep your pores really clean and by keeping your pores clean, that keeps your pores really small in size. So there's no granules in this one at all. It's what we call a surface regenerative. So it really takes that very outer layer and it just allows all your treatment products that you put on hereafter to be better absorbed into the skin. Now I'm just removing the exfoliating mask. When you remove the exfoliating mask, you wanna make sure that the water's not too hot. So if you are taking it off with a warm, wet washcloth, make sure it is just a lukewarm because the exfoliating mask, that it ha because it has a little bit of glycolic in it, it is going to be a little tingly on the skin, so you don't want to be using the, anything that's too hot. 
Now, Juliet did say that she was in Spain and that it was hard for you to eat certain foods, wasn't it, to know what was in your foods while you were away this time. So she said that mostly she was pretty good, but she said she felt that when she, a couple of times when she felt she wasn't quite sure what was in the food, she said she felt a little nodule or something coming up. Is that right, Juliet? Am I saying yeah. the right thing? Yes. So her skin is just so clean. It's really, it's really amazing, actually, even the sides of your face. I mean, I don't know how long we spent extracting. Do you remember the first time? Was Maybe it an hour and a half. An hour and a half. So tonight's extractions are probably not even going to be 10 minutes. So that's where we've come from. We just did the extractions that very first time. And then we did the second facial, we did the peel, the, uh, the peeling formula, which is a lactic acid peel with resorcinol. And she did send us some pictures so when she was peeling, so we can pop those in with this video so you can see them as well. And, and we've, we've just got a really clean skin. So I've cleansed, I've exfoliated. Now I have a little bit of my flavonoid, which I talk about a lot. It is an extraordinary vitamin for the skin. So there is something about when you feed your skin a lot of nutrients on the outside, uh, you're really getting to a lot of the layers. It's not something that you can do by taking a pill. And you, you have to physically feed your skin from the outside. So what the flavonoid does is because it has arnica, it has um, vitamin K, it has grapeseed, it, uh, it has a lot of great vitamins in it it really helps support the capillary wall. So anybody who's ruddy, and often when you're dealing with scarring, scarring is ruddy. It's, uh, it's either a pinkish ruddy or it's a purplish brown ruddy. So depending on how fresh the scar is, is to what color it is. So here, we're going to work it into the skin. So what it does is it really supports that blood vessel wall, and it's just so healing. So it's really a great product for uh, Juliet to be using at home in the evenings now to really help support. And um, I mean, her skin, the quality of her skin is so much better than just last time when I saw her, which was about three weeks ago. So it wasn't that long ago. I'm only going to work it in a few minutes. What I do and what I have had people ask me is, if it's something that's so good for the skin, why do you take it off? Now, if I'm using it at home, and I do use it myself at home as well, I do not take it off and you do not take it off. But because I'm working in treatment here and there's other things that I'm going to be doing that I work it into the skin to give it a coating and just to feed it a little bit before I then go on to my next product. And that's really important for me because of what I'm doing, so the, the steps. But when you're using it at home, you just put it on and it stays on the skin. You put your moisturizer over top of it, whether it be a retinol that you're using or an alpha hydroxy acid cream or just a regular moisturizer. It's, um, it's important to put your flavonoid on and then you can put your moisturizer over top and then, then you go to bed. So the one thing I want to mention about the flavonoid also, if you have dark circles around your eyes, or if your skin is really thin around your eyes, it's really good to use the flavonoid around your eye area. So you can put in a complete circle around your eye and you don't need a lot of it. But often when you stretch the skin around the eye area, if you look closely, you'll see that there's a bluey purpley vein there. And that is, um, it's a thinner skin, what we have around the eyes. We also do not have any sebaceous glands. So up close, very close to the eye, there is no oil activity, which is a sebaceous glands. But you can use your flavonoid around the eye, completely around the eye, on the eyelid as well as underneath. Because often a lot of people have those little tiny red veins on their eyelids. So this really helps support the little blood vessel and it stops leakage in the blood vessel, which is really important because as we get older, our skin gets thinner. So it's important to constantly be supporting our circulation in, in the skin, the circulatory system, and just really supporting our capillaries because that, that wall itself can get really thin and it gets weak as we get older generally. So it's nice to have that vitamin on the surface to really feed the skin, to support it, and to support it for our future. So I'm going to be removing the flavonoid now. It, uh, it does stain my towels yellow as my hands are yellow, so my towels get yellow and that's not fun for the washing. <laughs> 
Someone did ask me, what is my favorite type of tissue that I use? And although <clears throat> a lot of the time I use Kleenex tissues, um, I really like puffs tissues because they're a strong tissue. So for extractions, I really like the puffs. <laughs> but I, um, I tend to just, because I can't always get puffs, I tend to always um, mostly have Kleenex here. So for that person out there that wanted to know what brand tissues I use, um, puffs is a strong tissue and it, uh, it supports my extractions better. Um, so now what I'm going to do is um, I would use a little bit of steam normally at this point. I do like to use steam, but I just don't like to use it on everybody, especially if the, someone has a lot of heat in their skin because when someone has a lot of heat, it, it, to me, it's an indication of, um, number one, they need to stay away from certain foods. So that's tomatoes, that's your spicy, that's um, your wine, and it's wine more than it is a vodka. But, um, but any of those heat forming foods, that the heat, it shows me there's inflammation in the body. So when there's inflammation, I do not use niacinamides and I also do not use steam on the skin. It is um, definitely a flag for me for certain things that I can be using on the skin when, when, I, when I feel that heat from their skin, which is not Juliet's skin, but I'm just saying in general, um, that is one of the only times I don't use steam is if I feel that heat from somebody, I'm not gonna use steam in their facial treatment. So uh, with Juliet, I would normally use steam and I would use it at this point, but I also don't use steam a lot when I'm filming because um, the cameraman tells me he can't hear me as well. So we, um, we don't always use steam um, for that reason, so. Okay, so we are going to get started we're going to get started. I'm going to do a little bit of extraction on Juliet. She needs a little bit on the sides of her face. Um, I want to have a look under the Maggie lamp and um, I can bring you on over to have a look at her skin through the Maggie lamp as well, which I've also had people say, please do that because they really like it. So, uh, so we will have the, uh, the cameraman do that. And uh, so let's, uh, let's bring on the lamp and let's do some extractions. So looking at her forehead through the Maggie lamp, we can see how much better the scarring is on her forehead. She really, she doesn't have that, it's not as red as it was. And she, you know, it's very clean. Her skin is so clean. So her forehead's doing really great. Um, her cheek over there from when we first saw her too, her cheek is just so, it's so great. The scarring is, uh, it's just so good. It's on its way out. You can really see it's, it's healing nicely and it's on its way out. See the pores around her nose area, they're so small. She has very, very, very tiny pores around. I mean, tinier than most people. Um, her pore size is excellent. Her skin is very clean. She does a really good job of cleaning her skin. So I'm gonna do some extractions now. So we're just gonna do a little bit. Okay, we just finished extractions and I just said to Juliet that I could, ha I could count on both hands the amount of things I took out of her face, which originally we did an hour and a half and what did I do? Five minutes <laughs> of extractions on her today. Her skin is so clean and she's doing a really, really good job of cleaning it. So that makes me really happy and it's so important um, to, um, to clean your skin well. You know, a lot of people, they like to use toners as an extra form of a cleanse because they don't want to put the effort into cleaning the skin right with the cleanser. So, you know, a lot of people, when they say to me, I, I like to use a toner because I always get a lot of dirt off on my cotton pad, then my, my answer to you would be, well, but you're not cleaning properly. You have to clean twice. You, you can't do it in the shower. You need to do that first cleanse before you jump in the shower and take it off with a warm wet washcloth and, uh, and then repeat it. And maybe the second cleanse you can rinse off in the shower if you like, but you really should be able to clean your skin without having to get stuff on the to from the toner um, on your cotton from your skin. So I always say a toner 
is something that is a treatment for the skin. So whether it be a brightening toner or whether it's a toner that you know supports, it's got vitamin C in it or something that supports your skin from the sun, it has a purpose. So it's not just an extra form of a cleanse. A toner should be used for something as that, it, that everything you use on your, your skin has a purpose and certainly your toner should be too. So if you like to use a toner, and, uh, and I am prescribing a toner to you, it is because that toner has a purpose. It's not just to aid as an extra form of a cleanse. I've done extractions, so this is when I do use a toner on her skin after that. And this one has a little bit of AHA in it, so I know it gets into the pores there and it just cleans any bacteria out as well. So we're just using a light little toner there on her skin after the extractions. And now what I'm going to do, instead of using the normalizing formula, which you've seen me use in the past on people that tend to be more oily, I'm going to use the fruit complex, which has your, your complex of your, your AHAs your lactic acid, your glycolic, lactic, malic, tartaric and citrus. So I'm going to use a complex because I wanted to help her scarring from the outside in. So as I have described in the past, when you use an AHA that is a complex, it, it works on all different levels in the skin. And when you are working with scarring, you need to be working on all the different levels in the skin. So we are going to be putting on the fruit complex number one. So we have my fruit complex number one and I'm going to be putting a thin coat, coat all over her skin. So about five weeks ago, we did her first facial and we did the extractions on the side of the face that I mentioned earlier. And, we, um, and I gave her four home care products to start using at home. And that was the cleanser, the K cleanser, the healing gel, the Q flavonoid and the GAHA serum. So that's what she's been using up to date. Today I'm going to be adding more to her regimen. It's just two more items. Her skin will uh, now needs, she needs a light moisturizer. Her skin is getting better. So now she needs a light non-comedogenic moisturizer that she can use daily. And I'm also going to give her a solution because she lives in Arizona, she doesn't live here in LA. I need her to have something to be able to give her skin a little bit of a boost uh, with, uh, with the brightening as well as just to help with the oil a little bit too. So, we're, um, so I'm gonna give her a, a little uh, booster of that that she can use once a week at home as well. I'm just putting the Fruit Complex number one on Juliet's skin. It is equivalent, it's a 35% AHA and its pH is a little bit lower than most, it's about a 2.8. So it's equivalent to about a 35% AHA. In other brands, that's pH is 3.0. And this one here is a complex, so it has your glycolic, it has your lactic, it has your citric acid, your, uh, your malic and your tartaric. So it's the complex being able to work on all the many levels there to really help with her scarring, which is so minimal now. So we're removing the fruit complex number one off Juliet's skin. And I'm just using cool, cool water on the sponges. It's been on her skin a few minutes and now we're putting on the herbal mask. I've mixed a little bit of the aloe healing gel with it and we're going to put this on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of the eye gel around her eyes. I don't want the mask to set too tight up around her eye area. So we're just gonna put a little bit of the eye gel around her eyes. When I'm icing somebody, if uh, I don't want to put the ice directly on the skin sometimes, it I get a piece of gauze and this one here is it's quite a dense gauze and it's quite soft so I often use it as cotton too and I tear that like that I'll put it over her face like this and then I'll do another one but I'll tear this one all the way through and the great thing about gauze is you can stretch it it's so great I'll put that over her I'm going to put that down around here then what I'm going to do is with my little ice packs that I love 
to be able to mold is I'm just going to go over a face a little bit with the ice. I, uh, I like to use ice a lot, especially when I'm working with acnetic skins because it really calms the skin down after extractions. So even though Julia didn't have many, as you can see, she gets a lot of colour in her skin just from the AHA that I put on her, which is a fruit complex, and it is an alpha hydroxy acid, so it is an acid, and it does make the skin a little bit pink, and her skin is sensitive too, so it picks up with the, the ruddiness. So we hold it on about 10 seconds, and then I move it around the face like this. As I just said, these lights are very hot here. I wouldn't mind some of this ice on my face. <laughs> so nice. The skin is so clean. It's terrific. And I know now that we've got rid of um, a lot of that sort of angry, uh, the little spots that she had earlier on her face when we saw her five weeks ago. Uh, she's, her skin's just now all about healing. She's going to get her odd monthly pimple and uh, but, but her skin is so clean she's not going to be dealing with much at all it's now just scarring so I think what we are going to do when we have her come back in a few weeks it'll uh, it, we're going to do another peel on her and that's going to again it's just going to take the skin to another level it's going to really get rid of some of that um, that that scarring that she's left with but I am going to be giving her some home care that is going to really help support that as well. And I think I'm going to now introduce some retinol into her regimen as well. So we will be giving her some extra items to be using at home now just to really get the skin to that optimal place where we want to see it. And, and she'll see such an improvement with it. So you, it's really good to prep the skin before you do peels. And during your step, every, every little step that we do, there's, there's a purpose and there's a reason. So we want, to, we want to get her skin to a place where you see her and you would never know she had acne. And that's what we want for Juliet is we want her skin to just be flawless. And if you work with it correctly and you, you prep it and you do it the steps that are required, you are going to have a really pretty skin and you'll see that as we, we go along. So we shall. Okay, we've iced her down right now, and now we're going to remove the mask. So our treatment today is, uh, is a fairly short one. It's been about 45 minutes, and um, Juliet flew in, and she had a few hours with us, and now she has to catch another flight tonight. So we fortunately did not have to do very much on her skin. I wanted to see her skin from when we did her last time and see where she was at. I'm going to add a couple of more products to her home care regimen. And now we are working on just basically the scarring. She has just had really nothing to extract today. So it's, uh, her skin is very clean, it's great. And uh, we's, it's going to be really, really good moving forward. Okay, we have removed the mask. I'm going to put some healing gel on her skin. I'm going to put a little bit more of the Q-flavonoid. It is late in the evening here and uh, Juliet's catching a flight. So we're going to put the, the Q-flavonoid on over the healing gel. You can sometimes mix them together if that um, you too dilute it a little bit, which is perfectly fine. It's an easier application to do it that way. And then I'm going to put, I think today we're going to put a little bit of retinol on her skin tonight and that's how she's going to go home. About three drops of the Q-flavonoid mixed with a little bit of the healing gel is going on her skin. She is going to be out and about in public, so we don't want to make her too orange walking around. And her skin looks great. So what we've done is we have put on a little bit of healing gel mixed with the Q-flavonoid. And now I'm going to put a little retinol on her that she's going to go home with this on. She's make, taking a flight right now, it's a short flight, but neither way, either way it is a flight. And I'm going to put a little retinol on her. This one here that I'm using is the formula, the retinoid formula. It's a little bit stronger than the retinol cream. I am going to mix it with the healing gel again and we're going to put that on her. It's a really wonderful product, the retinoid formula. It so we have that retinol formula we're putting on now. And she's just going to go to bed as is. It smells so great. Doesn't it smell good? Can you smell mm -hmm. it? <laughs> so yummy. 
and I'm hoping Juliet can send us a couple of pictures until uh, we see her next time, which will be in a few weeks. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we are all done. We have her retinal formula on. This one here is the serum. It is not the retinal cream. It's a little stronger. It is a professional product. We've got the Q-flavonoid, the healing gel. We put the retinal formula on. I mixed a little bit of the retinal formula with the healing gel again. And the retinal formula is a pro professional product, so it's a little bit stronger than the cream that uh, that is our retail product. And she's all good to go, so she's ready to catch that flight. So thank you so much. Thank you for coming in. She stopped here just for a couple of hours to come and have the treatment, and so we can continue on with her skin. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you back again in three weeks, Juliet. Thank you. Thanks. See you soon. Bye.